So back to our presentations. Up next, we have the Common Cod Fiber Guild Path President. That is spelled P-R-E-Z-K-N-I-T. <laughs> Giving her presentation on mad painted furniture, here is Karen Garris. So I've probably painted about a house full of furniture and crazy mad patterns, not all at the same time and not all in my household, but I thought I would start with the story of how it all got started, the freaking captain's chair that started it all. When I was an impoverished graduate student, I needed some kitchen chairs, and I was horrified to find out that they cost like $200 a piece for kitchen chairs. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I was at a garage sale with my mom, and you can tell I'm from the Midwest because I said garage sale and not yard sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she found a pair of captain's chairs for $5 a piece. I hate captain's chairs. I said no. She said paint them. I did. <laughs> $5 each, you can't beat it. They were super sturdy. They were actually comfortable. They have like the butt dents and everything. So <laughs> this is another chair that I painted when I got a little bit better at it. This one was actually garbage picked, so it was totally free. This is pretty much what the inside of my head looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy in there. <laughs> This is actually, I have to improvise. I think the reason that this chair was actually picked to the curb is that a dog had been chewing on the stretchers down there. So to cover it up, I happened to have a bunch of unpainted wooden houses that I painted and glued on there, you know, as one does. <laughs> this is other stuff that's in my kitchen. My kitchen has this horrific and tragic harvest gold tile. And in order to distract from it, I put down a couple rugs, but they don't cover everything. So I have all this other stuff. So, but not everything has to look like Clown Town. My kitchen does have to look like Clown Town, but I can actually, I can tone it down a little bit. So I'll show you the one painted item that I actually have in my living room. <laughs> Another garage sale chair. This one was massively expensive. It cost $12. The people that I was with told me I was totally being ripped off to pay $12 for this chair. Um, I seriously, this is where I really wish I had taken before pictures because I don't think I can convey to you how incredibly ugly this chair was, especially the legs. They look so awkward and lumpy. But I'm pretty happy with how they look now. So this one I just marbled. So easy, any fool can do it. This one actually was, the color of the wood was nice, so I left some parts of it bare. And then my mom was watching me do it, and the backseat driver that she is, she insisted that I needed some metallic gold touches. <laughs> And you can also see the marbling better in this picture. You can also see a big nick that I need to do something about. <laughs> this is all you need to do it. It's actually super cheap. Even an impoverished graduate student can do it. Acry just acrylic craft paints in the tiny little bottles. You wouldn't believe how much furniture I managed to cover with that stuff. White and black are the only ones you need to get big bottles of. Um, and then it's the secret, triple thick clear glaze. It it gives a really nice depth to everything. It protects it, and if you're lazy like me, it only takes one coat. <laughs> Other cheap materials. So these, I use these foam applicators, which are supposed to be disposable, but you can actually just wash acrylic paint out of them and use them again and again and again. When I have a big surface area, I use those things. I also use them as zigzaggers. This is my striping brush. Everything looks better with a little black and white stripe. <laughs> That actually I got as a gift. That is a nice brush. It's actually worth spending money. You will get better results with a nice brush, and it'll last forever if you take care of it. Here are polka dotters. I don't know if you can see those Q-tips. And mini polka dotters. <laughs> I love polka dots. Uh, and then for the marbling, it actually works best if you use a sea sponge. You just cut it so that you have a flat side. Uh, sea sponges are kind of pricey, so you can use a kitchen sponge. The only problem is that the holes in those are smaller and more regular. It, it kind of looks better with the sea sponge. Lessons learned. Any fool can do this. I'm exhibit A. I have no artistic talent whatsoever. Super easy to do. What else did I learn? <laughs> Donate for perfection and you won't be disappointed. This one was really hard for me. I was trying to do the polka dots with mathematical precision, like a machine. I'm not a machine, so now I just, just do it. 
<laughs> the other thing that's um, encouraging is that whatever you do can be undone. If you don't like the way it turned out, you can wipe the paint off if it's still wet. You know, if all else fails, you can sand it, you can paint over it. it it's, you're not committed to anything. That was hard for me to learn. It's like, oh God, I'm going to do it wrong. <laughs> Try looking at things with different eyes. So the captain's chairs that I hate turned into something at least I could tolerate. And that Catholic <laughs> dining room chair, I actually really like it the way it's painted now. It looks really different when you look at it with an eye to painting it. <clears throat> Everything looks better with zebra. Or <laughs> <laughs> some black and white. <laughs> Thank you, Karen.